For those of you that are digging a little bit deeper into all of this, the first and more obvious picture here is that all of it is political theater designed to make Trump look bad so as to allow the Democrats to win in the next election. They fear Trump that much. They fear that he really is draining the swamp. Everyone from Obama himself to the bought and paid for lobbyists are now being investigated. You know, this is why we saw the bogus impeachment proceedings for years. And then suddenly the COVID-19 the last few months. And now, of course, the riots. And yes, this is why we saw all those tanks moving into every major city months ago. In fact, it has already been suggested that this isn't a protest anymore. This is a coup. The basic reality here is this. Trump is a Republican that the left hates with a passion. And that is why only the cities that are run by Democrats are having the riots. They are doing all they can to get him out of office so as to stop the investigations against them. But they can only do so where they have the power. And that's why it's only in their states you see these problems. But the big picture is what almost everyone is really missing. Satan knows his time is short. He has announced via his pawns in the United Nations that he wants his one world government by 2030 because even though he doesn't know the day or the hour of Christ's return, he can know the season. But then so can we. All the prophecies that were to fulfill by now have been fulfilled, except a few that already have their foundations set in stone. And so the dying God of this world uses the same bag of tricks that he has used the last 6,000 years to get the job done. He uses fear. But if you notice, the fear started in the hearts of the political leaders first. But then that's fitting that Satan needs to get them to do as he plans. He injects fear into the 535 members of Congress to make them fearful that the 330 million people in America are about to swarm D.C. and take them out. And since Satan has control over them for the most part, he moves them to work towards his long-desired one-world government, wherein he can get all his pawns to surround God's obedient people worldwide right before Jesus returns, with the hopes of either tempting all of us into his camp or just plain killing us to make his final work that much easier. But the fact is, Jesus is soon to come. All the signs are obvious now. That is why the peace and safety lie has been put forth by the Pope years ago and those that follow his lead, wherein they claim Jesus really isn't coming back that soon. All that you see that's happening in nature and society and all that, it's all has to do with climate change, they say. And as Satan has them focused there, he then kicks up their efforts by demanding a one-world government by 2030. Satan fears what he sees in the prophecies as well as what he sees happening in the heavens regarding the final and more visual signs. That is why the Vatican actually has a telescope named Lucifer, focused on the Orion Nebula. And so COVID-19 was born so as to have a tried and tested means towards his true agenda of Sunday laws being enforced to stop climate change. That's his ace up the sleeve. He can't test that. He has to test something similar to it so as to make sure all his ducks are in a row. But getting this all done in nine and a half years means he needs to speed things up in a big way. And so this is why after months of lockdowns, which he designed to destroy businesses, careers, and even kill loved ones without so much as a chance of anyone to sit at their bedside of their family member as they die in an empty hospital, or even hold a funeral for them, for that matter. The enemy of souls knows all this fear-mongering and all these unjust laws has brought the people to a breaking point because for the most part, they have been allowing him to control them all along anyway. I mean, he has absolute permission to be in their lives because they all embrace violent movies or violent rock and roll music and video games, as well as their alcohol and drug addictions. And all this brings their brains into a feverish and confused mindset wherein fear is easily injected. And as we all just saw, Satan then manipulated another government worker right when the timing was right. In this case, it happens to be a police officer who openly murders a man on camera. But there needs to be even more fear pumped into the hearts of man because that is exactly what was prophesied in Luke 21, 26. He needs national control over every individual if this is going to work. And so to make sure this gets so far out of hand where he can lock the entire nation down with martial law, 
that will easily bring about a socialist form of government in the USA, making it that much easier to enforce the mark of the beast, he gets the riots to break out in the cities, forcing the hand of big government. But some people are still too peaceful in how they protest, and so the powers that be actually bust in over 80% of the protesters from out of state to make sure it all goes to a boiling point. And they did that before. And they even shipped, can you believe this, a large stack of bricks for the protesters to use in the riots to make them that much more effective when they go berserk. It's all designed to make Christians fearful. Think about it. Satan already has the non-believers in his camp. He doesn't need to do all this for them. He already has them. In fact, they're the ones throwing the bricks and lighting the fires. He desperately needs to get the Christians to forget the promised peace of Jesus Christ so as to make them his future trophies that join him in hellfire to die with him. And so don't let the enemy of souls get to you, brothers and sisters. You worship the great God of heaven. Satan fears him. And he literally flees in abject horror when you, an obedient Christian, exercises your faith. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, To submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That proves he's the most wimpiest thing in the universe once you exercise your faith. And so as you look around at all that Satan is doing in our world right now, just remember the promise made by your Lord, your Savior, and your eternal King, Jesus Christ, and you will then find perfect peace. For Jesus clearly stated in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And he also said in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Thank you for watching. God bless.